and now for something completely different. <laughs> That's for you. I'm wearing a Monty Python watch for anybody who got that <laughs> reference. So this is different because these stories are all about chaos that happened to us and it was horrible and it was bad and it was stressful. And this is a story about planned chaos. It was chaos that we needed to happen at the time. For most of us, chaos is like the spider that we see in our living room. We notice it and we want to stomp it out as fast as we can. But this was a very, very different situation and it revolves around a wonderful, wonderful woman who is very inspirational and continues to affect my life in incredible ways. Her name was Marveen. Marvine was the head of the fine arts department at Towson State University where I went to school. And it's no surprise to me as a previous theater major that we already had a story about theater up here. Because theater does have a lot of chaos that happens backstage that you often don't see. Marvine was not a fan of chaos whatsoever. But what she liked even less than chaos was inaction. Does anybody know the play Waiting for Godot? That was her least favorite play. <laughs> I, I mean, I would have killed to have seen Patrick Stewart and Ian Mc on Broadway. Oh my God, it would have been fantastic. But she said, why would you spend two hours watching people who couldn't figure out what they wanted to do? So Marveen was a very orderly person. She had things planned out in advance to the ninth degree. And she was in charge at this point. She was in charge of the fine arts department. She taught one class. That one class was the pinnacle of the acting track at Towson University. It was called conservatory. When you took conservatory, you didn't take very many other classes that semester because you were expected to put so much into it. You got your first assignment at the end of the previous semester and you had all the way through the summer, all the way through the winter break to prepare for it. The class was so intense that if you were late by one minute, you took a failing grade or you repeated the class. Those were your options. Because theater is a discipline that requires that kind of commitment. So where this story really gets going is there's a gentleman who at one point in time eventually became my roommate. He was in this class and life had handed him lemons and he knew he was going to be late for this class. It was his last year at Towson and he couldn't afford to retake the class. He couldn't afford to take a failing grade. So he called his friends in the theater department and said, I need you to make sure that she doesn't know that I'm late. <laughs> yeah, right? There, there's nothing that actors love more than a challenge, right? So his friends ran through the theater department and pulled together everybody they could find. They ran through the music department, found everybody they could find, anybody in the fine arts department that didn't have a class that period, and many people who did, <laughs> all gathered into the small auditorium where this class was held. And Marveen showed up, as she always did, about two minutes before class started. Of course she did. She was never late. And when she walked through that door, all hell literally broke loose. Over here you had two men doing a stage combat with swords. There was a woman over here who was taking her shirt off and holding it above her head. There were people screaming, there were people crying, there were people singing Jesus Christ Superstar. I don't know what all was happening. I know there were some gymnastics were happening. I couldn't really focus on it all because I was juggling three random things that I found and ran around yelling kiwi or something <laughs> utterly strange. There were people who were running behind the seats and in front of the seats and jumping up and down. It was the most chaotic thing I'd seen in my entire life. And it went on for about five minutes until my friend Josh walked through the doors and then everybody just slowly dissipated. And Marvin looked at all of us and said, who was late? <laughs> <laughs> Nobody would put forth a name. She had no recourse but to applaud us for what we had done. Because again, the only thing that she loved 
less than chaos. The, the only thing that she hated more than chaos was inaction, and we had put action to work. I hadn't planned on telling this story today, but about two and a half years ago, we found out that Marvine had cancer. And it was a cancer that you don't really come back from. And in her signature style, she planned her own funeral. And I've got to tell you, it was the best funeral I ever went to. It was her final performance. There were interpretive dances, and there was a choir, and there was an orchestra. It was fantastic. But one of the things that spoke to me the most was one of the last things that I remember seeing her say was she said, what are you doing with your Towson education? I'm doing this. 